Welcome to Living Life. May the Lord bless you as you walk together with Him today. As we are looking at 1 John, there are many things that remind us how we ought to grow and what helps us to grow. A few things that we see again reminded in today's passage is this. If you come to know and have the assurance of salvation, if you know for sure that you have Jesus in you and because of that you have eternal life, having that assurance of salvation will help you to grow. And then also, if you have the assurance of answer prayer, that God hears you, what you whisper to him, what you say to him, that he hears and has his ears before your mouth and your heart. And knowing that he hears you, it will help you to grow in your walk with him. But also, if you learn to help others to grow in their walk with God and especially and restoring people uh, that are in sin. And that will help you to grow as you see God working redemptively in and through your life. Now, but another section that we want to again revisit is that area of how you need to uh, uh, be set free from the sin and deal with your habitual sin. And let's think about that together and how you can overcome that area so that you can continue to grow as God's children. First John chapter 5, verses 13 through 21. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of Him. If anyone sees his brother commit a sin that does not lead to death, he should pray, and God will give him life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I am not saying that he should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin, and there is sin that does not lead to death. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps him safe, and the evil one cannot harm him. We know that we are children of God, and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know Him who is true. And we are in Him who is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. As we look at from this passage, from verses 18 to 21, uh, some of the insights, principles that helps us to have victory over sin. And uh, these are helpful guidelines for us. Look at verse 18. It says, We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. Uh, the thing I want you to pay attention to is this. That if you have Jesus Christ, you are born from above, and then you are born as a children of God. Sometimes, uh, when we continue to sin or fall prey to our habitual sin, uh, whatever that may be, and sometimes we feel like, oh, I'm so trapped and I'm helpless and there is no way that I could get out from this problem and that is binding us. But here, in this passage, again, God's truth reminds us that we not just have a sinful pattern or old flesh, but are we are made and again and born again, and we are born of God. We have life of God, life of Jesus living inside of us. We are born as a new creature and then life of Christ and life of God grows in us. This is an important lesson for us to keep in mind. So what do we need to do? We need to continue to cultivate 
that life of God, to live a life of righteousness, and so that it will continue to take charge and continue to just lead our lives so that we will grow God working in and through us. Remember that you are born of God and God's life lives inside of you, that there is nothing that cannot, uh, that we cannot overcome, especially together with the help of God. Another thing that we need to keep in mind also is this. Uh, we know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps himself safe. And the evil one cannot harm him. And then even the whole world is under the control of evil one, that the evil one and the world cannot harm him. But the key word here is this, that those that are born of God need to continue to keep oneself safe. What I'm trying to say is this, we need to also learn how we need to discipline ourselves and so that the Satan, the world, and flesh will not continue to have its effect and its power in our lives. If you choose to sin, and then you are letting yourself open to giving yourself to the influence of sin, because you will sin again, and then you will allow the enemy, the Satan, to have more and more control over your life. But you need to learn to say no. You need to learn to keep yourself away from the things that disqualify you or lead you astray from not just the activities of the enemy, but also the things, the lures of the world and the idols that you may enjoy in your flesh. Learn to say no. Learn to keep yourself away from the things that pull you down and learn to keep yourself safe and learn to keep yourself growing. I mentioned that remember that you're born of God and God's life lives inside of you. And then second, learn to be disciplined, to keeping yourself away from those sins that pull you down. But another thing that we, we need to remember is this, that verse 20, we know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know Him who is true. And following, it says, we are in Him who is true. Even in His Son, Jesus Christ, He is the true God and eternal life. What's most important is this, that you and I need to continue to grow in understanding of the truth of the gospel. That Jesus came for you and died for you and because of his death and then he offers eternal life. And there is nothing that will separate you from God's love in Jesus Christ. Because you are in Jesus. Because eternal life is in him. When you have Jesus in you, that you will have eternal life. That you will begin to and continue to experience the power of God and power of Jesus setting you free. And here what we need to focus on is you need to continue to grow in coming to know and learning to appreciate, but learning to live in light of the truth of the gospel, of who Jesus is and what he has done and his love for you, and then how you have become his children because of his death and resurrection for you. Let's remember these lessons and reminders so that we may experience his power over whatever struggle and weakness that you may have as we continue to focus our eyes upon him.
you may be struggling with a habitual sin that may be difficult to kick, but notice that you have a life of Christ, life of God that is in you. You are born from above. You are made into a new creature, and you will begin to see how life of God in you will begin to set you free as you focus on what God is doing and who he is in your life. But also learn to put things under control and stay away from sinful things that may pull you down. But more than anything else, learn to grow in what Jesus has done for you and in who you are. Grow in the truth of the gospel and learn to give thanks and worship him and then live today as a child of God and you will see Christ's power and life that will begin to strengthen you so that you could overcome the areas of weakness that you may be struggling with. Lord Jesus, help us to have a testimony experiencing you through your power allowing us to overcome the area of habitual sin that we couldn't before. But Lord, through your love and through your power, help us to have victory and help us to live the life of victory that you offer to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.